STCW Regulation 5 Stroke 1 and Code Section A 5 Stroke 1. Emphasis will be placed on the correct methods of accepting and loading cargo, segregation and carriage, and correct methods of discharge. By applying the rules and regulations properly, you will avoid problems arising, especially regarding personal protection. The degree of protection required is determined by the type of cargo carried. If corrosive cargo is loaded, then chemical suits, gloves, boots, goggles and face shields must be worn, especially if loading at high pressure. If toxic cargo is present, full protection, including self-contained breathing apparatus, must be worn. Only if neither of these cargoes are being carried and there are no cargo movements in progress can you wear normal overalls, helmets, gloves and eye protection. You must always double check the requirements listed in the data sheets, as you will see later. The main regulations controlling the transportation of dangerous chemicals by sea are in SOLAS, Chapter 2.2, and the IBC Code, and in MARPOL, Annex 2. The US Coast Guard Chemical Data Guide and the ship's own Procedures and Arrangements, or P&A Manual, are also relevant. Everyone must be familiar with these codes and the way they apply to the cargoes and the types of ship they may be carried on. For a ship to transport chemicals, she must have a certificate of fitness, renewed every five years after a thorough survey of the ship's design, equipment, instrumentation and condition. This certificate will list the chemicals which may be carried. One or several of these chemicals might be carried on board a chemical tanker at any given time. Three cargoes you can inform you. Also this means that everyone on board must know all the hazards they represent. This knowledge is vital in two initial stages of cargo transportation. First, when head office decides to accept a cargo for shipment, and second, when the master and chief officer check the acceptability of the cargo and confirm the loading plan. So before a cargo is loaded, the master and the chief officer will have checked the certificate of fitness to confirm that it can be carried on board the ship, provided that it is suitably segregated and confined in a tank that is right for the cargo. They must also check each cargo for compatibility with the contents of adjacent tanks using the compatibility chart in the US Coast Guard's Chemical Data Guide for Bulk Shipment of Chemicals. Uh, Captain, according to my books, uh, it's not allowed to storage the styrene adjust to the tanks with the phenol. So I prepare my storage plan according to the instruction of the IBC code and... The ship's P&A manual is also consulted to establish the requirements for pollution control under MARPOL Annex 2. Once all the control criteria have been established, loading can be authorised. Take the data sheets to inform you about the... So everybody... To ensure that everyone on board knows what cargoes the ship is carrying, regulations stipulate that a cargo data sheet must be displayed for each cargo. These data sheets provide all the necessary information about possible hazards and the emergency procedures to follow in case of fire, unprotected exposure to the cargo, or its escape from confinement. MARPOL Annex 2 categorizes the chemicals as categories A, B, C and D in the order of their degree of hazard to the environment. 
category A being the most hazardous. But before we deal with specific cargoes, let's look at the ship in greater detail. For example, the codes recognize three types of chemical tankers, whether built to carry a single cargo or parcels of different cargoes. In a Type 1 ship, certain cargo tanks must be built away from the side of the hull by not less than one-fifth of the breadth of the ship, and the nearest corner of a tank is at least 760 millimetres from the outer skin. The bottom of the cargo tanks must be one-fifteenth the breadth of the ship, away from the hull bottom. These ships may be certified to carry the most hazardous cargoes. Type 1 ships provide the highest level of protection for products with very severe environmental and safety hazards. In a Type 2 ship, certain cargo tanks must be built at least 760 millimetres away from the hull and the tank bottoms must be one-fifteenth the breadth of the ship away from the hull. These ships provide a significant level of protection for products with severe environmental and safety hazards. A Type 3 ship is a vessel which will provide a moderate degree of containment to increase survival capability in a damaged condition for products which pose less severe environmental and safety hazards. Your vessel can only carry chemical cargoes which are permitted within the IBC code for its type and as listed in the Certificate of Fitness. This Type 2 ship has many individual cargo tanks, each capable of being cleaned, loaded, heated and ventilated separately. This means that each parcel of cargo can be controlled precisely in line with regulations and the ship's P&A manual. The tanks will be constructed either of stainless steel, which resists most cargoes, or will have specially formulated coatings to resist specific types of cargo. It is most important to verify in the tank coatings manufacturer's acceptability list what coatings will resist the cargoes to be loaded. Of course, the ship must be made ready to receive the cargoes, and one vital element of this process is to ensure that the tanks are absolutely clean and free from any residue of the previous cargo. This is to avoid cargo contamination. The contaminated washing medium can only be discharged as allowed by Marpol Annex 2. The tanks must also be temperature controlled in line with requirements. According to the data sheets, there will be four parcels of cargo on board. The hazards they represent include flammability, toxicity, corrosivity and reactivity. The styrene monomer is even self-reactive. The cargoes are due to be loaded into tanks well segregated as per the requirements stipulated in the Certificate of Protection. Having flammable cargo on board means that all possible sources of ignition, such as matches, lighters and battery operated equipment must be kept inside the accommodation area and must not be taken on deck. Battery operated instruments may be used but only if they are the approved intrinsically safe type. If you have to take metal tools on deck these must be carried in a safe way to prevent sparks being generated. Notice that fully protective clothing is worn, properly fastened, in view of the presence of corrosive cargo. Remember that protective clothing will only provide temporary protection, so if you encounter spillage or otherwise make contact with corrosive cargo, this must be cleared away as a matter of urgency. Emergency procedures are dealt with later in this program. 
We've seen that there is toxic cargo on board. Toxicity can affect you by absorption through the skin and by inhalation. To protect you from being poisoned through inhalation, breathing apparatus must be worn. The protective clothing will temporarily prevent absorption in case of contact with the cargo. Prior to starting any job, while loading or discharging, the atmosphere must be tested for the presence of flammable or toxic vapour. Check that this has been done prior to work starting. Cargoes of this type must be loaded in closed conditions. The same safety precautions must be taken anywhere on board ship where toxic or flammable vapours could accumulate. If this involves working in enclosed spaces, such as coffer dams, special entry permits must be obtained from a designated officer. During the voyage, each cargo must be kept at the correct temperature and where appropriate, for instance, when the cargo can react with oxygen, it must be inerted or padded. There may be other operational requirements. For example, checking the period of validity in a reactive cargo, such as a styrene monomer. This cargo may react with itself if the applied inhibitor falls below a certain level. If this happens, the cargo could solidify in the pipeline or in the tank vent gauzes, preventing discharge. Other cargoes may need to be carried at a specific temperature to avoid becoming off specification. Start slowly, 50, and then by your information I will increase. It depends also of the loading temperature in the port. Okay. Prior to arriving at the discharge port, the charterer's agent communicates all the details of the cargo, their requirements for tank washing and any other information which has a bearing on the operation of the ship, the port or the surrounding environment. The unloading of any chemicals must be in accordance with regulations laid down in the codes and in the ship's P&A manual. These conditions and the starting time, rate of unloading, purging of the lines, in fact all procedures involved, must be done in complete agreement with the Port Authority's terminal regulations. Checklists should be used to ensure this. Every day, hundreds of cargoes are handled safely without any problems, because the correct safety procedures are followed. But despite all the precautions, emergencies can arise. Yeah, bridge. Uh, Captain, we have a smoke and the fire in the pump room location. Okay, chief mate, I will read the alarm and uh, try to uh, keep me informed, please. Okay, Captain, I will do that. You have checked the cargo data sheets, but do you know the correct emergency procedures to follow in the case of each cargo on board? The appropriate emergency procedures should be regularly practiced on board ship so that you are familiar with the location of the emergency equipment and protective clothing. The nature of the emergency will be communicated to you and the master's specific instructions must be followed exactly. Remember, each cargo has its own specific emergency requirements, therefore the measures taken can be very complex. For this reason, besides internationally agreed procedures, the company emergency manual must be adhered to at all times. In summary, working on board a chemical tanker means being familiar with the cargoes on board at any given time. Being familiar with the ways the IBC code controls the carriage of these cargoes. Being familiar with the way Marpole Annex 2 categorizes these cargoes.
strictly following the cargo plan when loading the cargoes. Strictly following the safety rules in force on board ship. And being familiar with all the emergency procedures relating to all the cargoes on board. These are complex regulations. If you are not clear on any point, seek further advice from senior officers. Working on board a chemical tanker also means knowing what to do to prevent pollution. This is an important topic and is the subject of part two of this program. Prevention of pollution on board chemical tankers.